And then she burst into tears and started screaming. And I was like, oh my gosh, I have made a child cry. I am an awful human being. Somebody take me away. Um, why are you so close to me? Hello everybody and welcome back to my podcast, Esme's Country Life. In today's episode, I'm going to be talking about my adventures in Portugal, uh, which include being chased by a dog, making a child cry and getting a plane on my own for the first time. But before we start today's podcast episode, I just want to say a huge thank you to the sponsor of the podcast, Red Post. Red Post is an equestrian and country store based in the UK, and they also ship all over the world. And did you know that at the moment, they're now selling EQ bands? If you've, been, if you've been watching my videos for a little while, you might know that I use them quite a lot with my trainer, D. And basically, they're these bands that you kind of... I'm going to try my best to explain this in an audio term, but they're these bands, are like kind of like resistant bands that you use for exercising but you can wear them while you're riding a horse and when I tell you it makes your legs burn in a good way in a good way and basically it makes you use the areas that are weaker so for me the areas that I'm currently working on with my riding or that I need to build up more of my hips I'm often quite stiff in my hips and my left leg especially I'm a lot weaker on that side but anyway if you'd like to find out more information be sure to head to redpostequestrian.co.uk Anyway, let's get into today's episode. So as you guys know, I have recently had a little holiday. Um, I always find like end of August, beginning of September is a really good time for me personally with my job and the way things work to have a little bit of time off because basically from now until Christmas, it is game time. It is like the social, like I have quite a few friends that are in farming. So I describe them, describe it to them that kind of October time getting to there. It's basically harvest for me. It is the busy time. Everything is happening. All of the stuff kind of before Christmas as well. I don't know if it's a bit too early to say the Christmas word. Some people will get angry at me. Um, But yeah, it's it's game time. It's go time. So it's nice to have like a little bit of a little bit of a chill, a little bit of a downtime. I'm definitely that kind of person. I never really thought I would be this person. But I find just having some time away from the horses and time away from social media I have come back this week feeling so refreshed, so energized. And just especially when you have a creative job, it's nice to have some time away um, to just like inspiration and creativity and that kind of thing. I feel like I've come back with so many ideas, so many things I want to do. Um, So yeah, I'm I'm feeling good. I'm feeling fresh. I had such a lovely time away. Um, But yeah, so I thought I'd talk to you about my adventures because if you've been listening to the podcast for a while, you'll know that I don't know, just chaotic things always end up happening, even when I'm on holiday, trying to have some, you know, rest and recovery and that kind of thing. So anyway, starting off, I thought I'd tell you where I've been. So I've been to Portugal. I've never been to Portugal before, apart from I've been to Lisbon Airport for a few hours as like a stopover. That was actually when I went to Senegal with the Brook Charity. Um, We flew from actually before that, I was working in Barcelona doing some filming at the, some sort of, I can't even remember what it was, I think it was the Jumping Nations Cup kind of thing. Anyway, so I did some filming there. So I literally flew from Barcelona to Lisbon, was there for like a few hours and then got a plane from Lisbon to Senegal. So there we go. (laughs) So technically I have been to Portugal once before, but I don't think that really counts because I didn't leave the airport. Um, So anyway, it was my first time in Portugal. And I'd say if I had to summarize the holiday of what we kind of mainly got up to, lots of beach trips, lots of walks, and also lots of pastries as well. Um, So if you want to, I went with my boyfriend and met some of his family out there. So um, yes, yes, (laughs) yes, <laughs> if you've been listening to some recent episodes, you'll um, know who Batman is. So I'm going to refer to him as Batman for the for the rest of the, yeah, the video. So yeah, anyway, um, moving on. So I felt like I had, I, because those guys, they know the local area. They've been there so many times before. I felt like I had local tour guides with me. So they were telling me like where I needed to go, what we needed to do, um, what where to eat, the best places to be. So um, yeah, starting off, I thought I'd talk about the pastries because... I love food. Um, but also, I apparently there's a thing, there's, it's called pasta donatas. I really hope I'm pronouncing that the best I can. It's definitely not in a, like a Portuguese accent. I feel like if you're Portuguese, I'm going to be like, Esme, you have 
butchered that. But anyway, uh, the best way to describe it, it's like a little pastry and it's kind of filled with like custardy kind of stuff. And if you know me, I love custard. I will have, if I have the option to have custard on any sort of pudding or dessert, I will choose it. Even in the summer, if it's like the choice of custard or ice cream, I'm going for custard. Anyway, so I had those for the first time and they were incredible. And basically every single sort of bakery, shop, place that sells food that you would go to, they had them. Even their McDonald's had them. So also I found, sorry, this is so weird. This is not that interesting, but I've got a friend and she is obsessed with McDonald's. And if I ever go to a foreign country, she always wants to know what's on their menu that's different. So if you want a little fun fact, McDonald's in um, Portugal sells soup that I didn't really know was a thing. McDonald's soup. Um, My boyfriend's brother had some and apparently it wasn't that nice. So there we go. Maybe it was just that particular one that he had. But I can't lie, it looked a bit... It's like a purpley grey colour. Anyway, um, we had other soup in Portugal that was incredible. Apparently they're known for their soups out there, so would recommend. Um, But the other thing that we had, now when I tell you, I think this was one of the best cakes I have had in my life. Um, It is up there in my top five, I'd say. Maybe it's because it was a homemade one from um, his family's neighbours. But anyway, it's called a Sintra cake. And I don't know how many people know this because Sintra is kind of like like an area in Portugal, like a town in Portugal. So I don't know if it's just in that area that we were staying in or if it's like everyone in Portugal knows what it is. Um, But anyway, when I describe this to you, you're going to be like, Esme, what are you on about? That sounds disgusting, but it was honestly so good. Um, So actually, I'm going to tell you what, when I first tried it, his family were like, okay, what do you think's in it? And I was like, oh, this is before I'd taken a bite. And I was like, oh no, it's going to be something really obscure and weird. Like, what is this? What are you feeding me? Um, So anyway, I started eating. I thought if it's something weird, I'm going to say like a vegetable because we have carrot cake. And I feel like that's kind of like an odd thing to put in a cake when you think about it. So I was like... I was like, is it some, I was like, is it a courgette? I don't know why that's the first thing that came to my mind, but I'm pretty sure it's a squash. They use like a squash jam in it. And I tell you what, they, they like their squash jams and their pumpkin jams over there. And they are actually really good, would recommend. So um, it's kind of got like a pastry base, squash jam, and then it's kind of like a cinnamony kind of stuff on top. And like we had it with some cream as well. And it was so good. Maybe it's because... I talked about this a lot in the previous one of my previous episodes that I'm so excited for autumn and because it was kind of cinnamony I was like living my cinnamon fall girl autumn life um but even though I was in a really warm country but it was very good so there we go okay that's enough talk about food I feel like the first half of this podcast I haven't really even been talking about my holiday I've just been talking about food um but yes anyway one thing that I did find out is that Batman's family they love a walk they love a hike and don't get me wrong I love a walk and a hike as well. But when I tell you this family, they were like, oh yeah, we'll just go for like a nice hike down to the beach. When I tell you we were, I was basically abseiling down, down a cliffside at one point. I'm not even joking to you. There was a rope that you had to use to get down this cliffside. And I thought, you know, oh, we're just going for a nice walk. Like his younger brother, he had like, adidas trainers on like i think they could, i can't remember maybe that they weren't superstars they were the other ones but like just like plimp soul kind of trainers his mom had like converse on i was like what and then i i luckily i i did have my lumia tracks trainers on so i had my grip i was all good but yeah i was like oh my gosh we're literally scaling down this cliff and they're just in like normal shoes they're not even in trainers not even in walking boots like i'd say that was a walking boots kind of trip um but anyway we made it down to the beach and the beach was lovely actually one of my favorite beaches that we went to that i'm gonna keep a secret because i'm gonna gatekeep i'm gonna gatekeep the beach um but basically most people at this beach are they either just don't really care sitting around people. I'm the sort of person when I go to the beach, I want to be as far away as every other person as possible. I don't understand when you go to the beach and you sit down and then some like there's like the the whole beach. You could just walk, you know, an extra five minutes or so. Nobody will be there. Yes, I'd much rather be away from everyone. But it's like when people come and sit next to you on the beach and like they could have just gone like a few steps further and they'd just be a bit further away. I don't know. I find that really weird. It's a bit like when you sit on the train and there's loads of other free seats and somebody sit next sits next to you and you're like, um, why are you so close to me? Um, anyway, so at this beach, 
also something that I found out is a lot of beaches in Portugal have like cliffs around them like the scenery there is beautiful like proper cliffs dramatic very strong waves that's one thing I would say there was a lot of waves there um, which I really enjoyed we did I did a little bit of bog- boggy boy bodyboarding or boogie boarding whatever you want to call it I think I would say bodyboarding although bo- boogie boarding sounds more cool but it does make me think of like boogers or like nos- n- n- snot nostril snot anyway <laughs> moving on <laughs> that was really random um so yeah we we basically this beach that they've it was my favorite beach I think we went to it like three times um if you carried on walking and you went round the corner where the cliffs were basically we had our own private beach because nobody either people knew about it and they just were too lazy to walk around the corner or they didn't know about it and we went around this corner and we just had this whole beach to ourselves and it was stunning beautiful so oh yeah I do have a funny I have a funny story of when I was on the beach so I am somebody that I am not used to I am not used to late nights I'm a I need to be in my bed at 9 p.m sort of gal sometimes earlier sometimes I like to get in bed at 8 30 and then be asleep by nine because I wake up early you know I've got horses to look after I've got busy life I just like to be in bed at a nice early time like it's just my comfort place it's my happy place um when because we're on holiday we had quite a few late nights also his parents and him and his family they're used to staying up late I am not used to staying up late so one day I thought perfect I'm going to have a nice little nap on the beach and because you guys know I am a very pale person and I will slap sun cream on and put on like a long sleeve white shirt and a cap and sunglasses because I had the skin of a ginger newborn vampire baby and I just slap myself in factor 50. I'm like, I am not getting sunburnt. <laughs> anyway, so I thought, perfect. We've got a spare towel. I'll have one towel that I'll lie on and then I'll go into what I call, <laughs> when I was younger, I used to call it the egg because I used to, do, I don't know, this is really weird. I used to, after a bath when I was younger, I'd crawl up into a little ball, I'd call it the egg and then I'd put the towel on top of me and that's how I'd dry myself. Anyway. <laughs> anyway I did that I went into a little egg I put the towel over me so I wouldn't get sunburnt because so I had a towel on me keeping me in the shade and I slept for like a good hour or so and anyway by the time I woke up I kind of you know when you're like you wake up from a nap and you're a little bit disorientated and you're a little bit like your eyes are kind of blinking I felt like a mole that like seen the surface of the sun for the first time anyway I looked up and there was a full on trench around me that Batman had dug around me and I was like what in the world how did I have no idea that he had dug this whole yeah trench around me luckily I was far enough away from the sea that no water went into the trench but yeah I've got there's a photo of me that I have on my phone that I don't think I will be posting on social media because I I look like a naked mole rat I my hair because I've been in the sea was like sticking up in all sort of directions and I'd woken up from my nap and I was not looking fresh. I was not looking good. Um, So yeah, of course, Um, he posted that on the family group chat. But do you know when he posted it on the family group chat? When I came home, he was like, I'm going to post this on the family group chat when... (laughs) now it's me and I are not in the same country anymore because she can't get angry at me so there we go anyway um now it's on to the problem actually I've got so many dramatic stories from this trip I don't know which one to tell first so this is actually on our first no second night because we arrived in the evening so that wasn't technically our first night but it was our first night where we went out to dinner we went out to um this place that we call the windmill bar because it's like an old windmill and it was really pretty and we're walking home la di da di da and as we were walking home his mum started telling me the story about when he was a kid uh or when he when batman was in the pram she was pushing him along in the pram and apparently in portugal they used to be like back in the day or maybe it was just in this area because it's a very remote village that we were staying in there used to be a lot of wild dogs And she was telling me the story about how there was this one dog that attacked her and like bit her ankle and she was having to like fend off this dog who'd like trying to save her baby in this pram. And like, I was like, oh my goodness, that's scary. And then Batman started telling me the story about, you know, how um, he's done quite a few bits of like traveling bits and bobs. So when he was in like Panama and India and all these stories about how he's had like wild dogs or dogs chase him before and that kind of thing. And I was like... Oh, so I was, you know, 
a little bit freaked out, a little bit shaken up, you know, just hearing these stories. And then as we were walking along, something that I did realise is in Portugal, a lot of people have guard dogs. Maybe it was just in this remote village, but a lot of people had dogs that kind of lived outside. And um, so as we were walking along, there was a lot of barking and that kind of thing. And then we'd just finished telling the story. And then there were these proper low barks growls as we were walking down this dark alleyway um now we were were like oh it's you know uh, it's fine all of all of these houses they have gates and they're all shut not this one gate it was open there were these two massive dogs i didn't even see what breed these dogs were because i was usain bolt i had never run as fast as i ran then i zoomed it i pegged it away from these dogs so my boyfriend was there like defending me (laughs) against these dogs with his dad and then his mum like ran a little bit but not as far my my fight or flight i was flight i was gone i was like see you later i don't care what happens to you i am out of here my brain didn't even think my legs were already carrying me in the opposite direction anyway then i turn around and i see in the kind of group one of the dogs had got past Batman and Batman's dad. And I thought, oh no, what have I done? I've run away on my own. If this dog starts running towards me, of me on my own, I'm I'm defenseless. I have nothing on me. I didn't even have my phone on me because I was wearing a dress. Batman had my phone. Not that I don't know if that would have helped me or hindered me if there was a dog there. I was like, I have nothing. What, what am I going to do? Luckily, the dog did not chase me. And luckily... Um, I can't really actually remember what happened. I think Batman's dad might have shouted at the dog something in Portuguese and said it really loudly and the dogs got scared and ran back home. Or they managed to walk far enough away that the dogs were like, okay, we're going back to our, our house that we need to guard or that kind of thing. But anyway, no dogs were harmed. No humans were harmed. It was all good. But uh, But the story does not end there with dog attacks because... One of the days, um, me and Batman thought, okay, we're going to go to um, this place. We were dropped off, that kind of thing. On the way back from this little tour that we did around this other town, uh, we got the we got the bus home. And anyway, the bus, we you know, on like kind of buses, you press the stop button where you want to get off. And we thought, oh, there's a, like a little lay by here. We'll press it just before so the bus driver knows to drop us off here. So we don't have to walk as far because it's a little bit closer to the where the bus stop actually is. Anyway, he probably thought, oh, they want to be dropped off at the like nearest bus stop. So we went past that bit and had to walk a little bit further to get home. The only issue was this. We got off the bus, started walking down and then we realised, oh, no. We're walking back towards Dog Alley again. (laughs) And literally just as we kind of had the decision of should we go down Dog Alley or should we go down the other way, which is the slightly longer route, there was a the dogs, they were back. I don't know if they smelt us. I don't know if they heard us, but they came running out of the driveway and stood at the end of the alley staring at us. And we were like, okay, we will not go past Dog Alley we will go the longer route and get our steps in. So there we go. If if anything, I don't know if there's really a moral to this story. Um, but yes, be careful of dogs. <laughs> anyway, moving swiftly on to the next, probably one of the most embarrassing stories I have to date. This is the sort of story where I was like, do I, should I tell this on the podcast? Because I felt so bad, but it was also so funny at the same time. Now, one of the places that we went to um, was this really pretty kind of palacey place in the town of Sintra. Now, last time my boyfriend had been there, he said that um, basically like he would go there all the time as a kid. And a lot of the time they would have the whole place to themselves. What we didn't realise is that since last time he went... It had become very touristy. So we went there and we're like, oh my goodness, what is this massive, like, there was a huge um, like line of people. And we're like, what is this queue? Where are these people going? And we realised it was to the place that we wanted to go to. And you had to book a time slot just to be able to enter this palace and the gardens and everything. So luckily, I was like the data queen on this trip because I was the only person that had um, like 4G or data. Everyone else like in their kind of like phone contract, they had to pay extortionate rates to be in a foreign country. So luckily with my job, I've got a really good contract on my phone because I do a lot of work abroad. So 
I, I have like unlimited data wherever I go. So I was like hot spotting everyone. So I managed to get the tickets. And by the time we walked out back down the hill, had some lunch, it was time for our time slot. And we just, I don't know why all these people were queuing, but anyway, uh, we managed to get in. Maybe that was just to buy tickets in person rather than online. I don't know. We managed to get in and we went around this beautiful palace, had a little look around. I love looking around like oldie woldy, like things like that. Um, and then they also had a really nice gardens and walking around there. And it honestly feels magical. I I don't really know the, f- I probably sh- should have <laughs> read a little bit more of the full story, but a lot of things were in Portuguese um, of like the story behind it all. But basically I think it was just this really rich fella. And he was like, you know what? let's build a really cool palace but also he built loads of like little uh, the best way I can describe it is like little castle turrets it was almost like an adult playground I think I don't want to go too much into detail because I don't know how dodgy this is but I'm pretty sure that there was some sort of cult or something that was there at some stage I don't know but it was a very pretty gardens you can appreciate that and also there were a lot of caves as well so honestly I felt like a little kid like going around all the caves and like this like fake little kind of almost I don't know like fort kind of thing so we're wandering through the caves la di da di da and um as you guys know small confined spaces I am a bit of a claustrophobic person not for me no thank you now these caves it was like kind of like a one-way system but it, um there was like this little waterfall that you could go to that kind of like came out the caves so we went down there and then that bit wasn't a one-way system so I forgot that the way that we were walking wasn't a one-way system anymore. So I was used to kind of like, you know, going with the flow of people. Um, So anyway, we're walking around the corner. And at this point, it was pretty much like almost pitch black. Like you had to use your phone torch to get around. And um, I didn't realise at the time that it was a child. But there was something going around the corner towards me, running at speed that was probably about knee level height. And... Being number one in an enclosed space, I was already like a little bit on edge. And number two, also being in the dark, I was also a little bit on edge. So when this small child came running around the corner in the dark at me, what was I to do? I screamed. As if you heard the previous episode where I screamed on the tube, like I'm a screamer. If something freaks me out, I will scream. I am a jumpy person. So anyway, I basically scream in front of this small child's face and oh my gosh this child I've now never felt so awful especially as I can still picture the small child's face in my mind because she kind of ran up to me and as I screamed she kind of stopped dead and like her face was like in shock for a solid like two three seconds and then she burst into tears and started screaming. And I was like, oh my gosh, I have made a child cry. I am an awful human being. Somebody take me away. Uh, just, I just wanted the ground to swallow me whole. Um, so yeah, that was very embarrassing. And then because I was in shock and also it sounds bad, but it was quite funny as well you know when you have that thing where you're like I really should not laugh this is not a funny situation but because I was felt so awkward and so uncomfortable you know when you've got that feeling where like you're kind of like laughing but silently and I was like and these people I don't even know if they spoke English but I was like I'm so sorry I'm so sorry and we quickly ran away when I tell you I think I might have ran faster away from that crying child than I did from the dog that was chasing me earlier I, we were gone. We were like, okay, we need to get out of these caves. We need to get out of here. Someone's going to ring the police. Someone's going to take me away. Anyway, yeah, I felt very bad. I promise it wasn't on purpose. I don't normally make children cry. But to be fair, if something was running at you in the dark in a cave at knee level height, I'm sure you would scream as well. So anyway, on that note, I think we're going to swiftly move on from that story. But if you ever go to Sintra, would recommend going to the palace. It's very pretty. So the last story I have to tell you of my trip was my journey home. Now, out of all the people in this world, I would say I am pretty experienced when it comes to flying. Like, I'm very, very lucky with my job. I do get to travel quite a lot. So being in an airport, it's not like it's a, it's a scary place for me. But for some reason, the thought of getting a plane on my own 
it it freaked me out a little bit because I was like, oh my gosh, if I can't, because also I had, this was a Saturday night that I was flying home and I was going out with my friend on the Sunday for lunch. So I was like, I can't miss this flight and let her down. And then also I had a work opportunity halfway up the country on the Monday. So that's another reason why I had to go home. So Batman was staying out a little bit longer with his family. I had to come home to number one, have lunch with my friend <laughs> and number two, um, my work off my work stuff and anyway um which I will tell you probably about in the next podcast episode I have so many stories to tell you I'm after having a week away like I'm like oh I need to tell the podcast about this I need to tell the podcast about this anyway um so I had my flight back on my own and I was like I don't I think it was like a little little anyway um I don't know if this is embarrassing or not but when I said goodbye to my boyfriend <laughs> at the airport I might have cried a little bit and I felt really silly and it was just like I'm gonna literally see him in a week it's not even that long and I was like and I, I mean I've only known him like two three months which just sounds ridiculous but I think also part of it was the adrenaline of being like I've got to go through all the things on my own and that kind of thing also can I just say I don't know if it's because I was traveling on my own and I had a big rucksack and they must have been like that girl looks dodgy but I had like my I I had to be you know when they like go, you go through the beep 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 machine it goes beep 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 and they were like now nah, mate you look dodgy we're gonna like wipe some stuff on you to see if you've got like gunpowder or drugs or something on you so I got tested for that and then I also had my rucksack stopped and they looked through there one thing that I can say though I went away for a whole week a whole week I had a different outfit every day and I managed to pack it in my rucksack. I would say, as a girl, I I am impressed. You can I would say now you could take me anywhere and I reckon I could fit everything in a rucksack. So there we go. So if you want to know exactly which rucksack it is, not to be that person, but it was my This Is Me rucksack that I have with Charles Owen, which is actually designed for putting riding boots in and also a riding helmet, mainly for a riding helmet actually, because it has like a really cool little meshy net thing that you can adjust so you can put your helmet like on the back. So I use that quite a lot when I'm traveling because also if you haven't like, an extra thing so for example in the airport I bought a book and I couldn't fit it in my bag I just put it in the like little meshy thing so there we go life hack um anyway so uh, because his family they're used to going to this airport quite a lot they were like ah it's fine you don't need to get there that early I'm the sort of person where I will get to an airport three hours early I will have my dinner there or my lunch there or my breakfast there depending on what time of day it is like I like to have a good meal before I get on a plane because sometimes I get a little bit plane sick but also I, I don't know just plain food it's not it anyway so I um yes I <laughs> so I went straight to my gate I was like I can't miss it in case I don't know I was just freaked out um but yes so my my lunch that day was a packet of crisps from the vending machine and a bottle of water from the vending machine so very nutritious um but yeah so anyway got on my flight all fine one thing I would say maybe it was just sometimes Portugal can be quite windy oh my gosh our landing into Portugal I have, I'm not normally, I'm like a pretty chill person when it comes to flying. Like I do fly quite a bit as I said before. I'm very lucky that I get to with my job. But one thing that I've got to say is our landing was probably the scariest landing we've ever had because our plane, I don't know how, to, I'm, just, I'm really bad at audio describing things, but our plane was basically going sideways and it was kind of moving about. We were proper going like whoop, 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 wobbly, like turbulence that's fine that's that's some I can't remember who said it but somebody said turbulence is like the plane being surrounded by jelly it's wobbling but it can't actually like fall out of the sky there's enough like air under it but when it was wobbling like this I was like one wrong move and we're gonna do a roly-poly it was like I was proper holding onto Batman's hand like oh my goodness freaking out anyway um so there we go and then on my flight home my, my, I think it was like an hour delay just chilling on there. That's fine because I'm that person who is very good at entertaining themselves. I will always have like at least five episodes of a show downloaded on my phone just in case I end up somewhere with no data or no internet connection. And then when I came home, I was greeted by my dad who very kindly came and picked me up from the airport. But what did he have? A huge whiteboard, like a three foot wide, like meter wide whiteboard that said the internet. Siri, 
Siri, I don't want to know about your whiteboard. Can you go away, please? Okay. Oh my gosh, the other series started talking now. Oh my gosh, the series are all here. <laughs> they all entered the chat. They want to join the podcast. <laughs> anyway, so it said, the international superstar influencer, this says me. Oh my gosh, I was so embarrassed. I was like, I don't know this man. I was like, obviously, like I went and hugged my dad straight away because I was like, I want to hug my dad. And he did have a GoPro hanging off his cap. And I was like, what? I was like, of course, of course. So I, I look like a proper weirdo being greeted by this man with a camera on his head and a huge whiteboard saying superstar international influencer. This is me. And I was like, goodness me. I was like, I'm, I'm, I was like, mm, maybe I'll get somebody else to pick me up from the airport next time. But I'm very grateful to my dad for very kindly picking me up and also looking after all of the horses while I was away. So thanks, dad. Anyway, on that note, I'm going to finish up today's podcast episode there. I really hope you enjoyed hearing about my adventures of Portugal. Would definitely recommend as a holiday destination if any of you are interested. Had a really lovely time. And anyway, on the, also, I just want to say a huge thank you to Red Post for very kindly sponsoring the podcast. Be sure to check them out at redpostquestron.co.uk. And I'll see you guys all next time because I still have so much to update you on. I need to update you on the horses, on all the things that I've been up to lately. I also have a really busy weekend on the weekend on the week that I'm recording this I'm literally away for the rest of the week I'm filming this on a Thursday and I've also had a photo shoot this morning so your gal is busy I told you like I had my week off and I've got no breaks until Christmas now but anyway see you all next time bye